Hello, everyone. Welcome back to machine learning sessions. In this session, let's talk about EBNN, Explanation Based Neural Network Learning Algorithm. So, this comes under using prior knowledge to alter the search objective. Let's get into the details. In the EBNN algorithm, we will be providing two inputs. One is a set of training examples of the form xi comma f of xi with no training derivatives. Okay, so similar to the tangent prop, here we are not supplying the derivative. Only we are supplying the training example of xi comma target function f of xi. And we are supplying a domain theory as well. And here the domain theory is represented as a set of previously trained neural networks, but it is not a con clause. Okay, so in the KB and, and an algorithm, we have provided a set of con clauses, but it is not the Horn class, but we are providing all the already trained neural networks so that we already have the trained base. We are working on top of it. Okay, so the output of EBNN is always a new neural network that approximates the target function f. Okay, so comparatively, the efficiency of this should be good compared to the KBNN algorithm, right? Because already we are trying the, we are taking the trained weights and we are supplying some more examples to it. Okay, so this learned network is trying to fit both the training examples in the form of xi comma f of xi and here it has to satisfy the inductive component of the learning. Okay, when it is satisfied is when it is satisfying these training examples. And it also has to satisfy the training derivatives extracted from the domain theory, which is an analytical component. Okay, so here you can see it is a combination of both inductive and analytical learning. So here you can see the example. So they are in this upper part, whatever you are seeing, so this is a trained neural network. So this is derived from the domain theory. And here each rectangular box is representing a distinct neural network from the domain theory. Here we are taking the same domain theory that we have taken in the KBNN algorithm. Okay. So here you can see what are the clauses that we have considered. Bottom is flat concavity points of extensive fragile handle on top, handle on side has concavity, has handle light, made of ceramic and made of paper, made of styrofoam. Okay. So here you can see some are expressed as T and some clauses are taken as F. Okay. So if it is F, the weight value is 0 0.2. If it is true, the weight value will be taken as 0 0.8. Okay. So here you can see the final value of this curve should be T. So whenever it is true, the value is 0 0.8. And what should be the final tar final network is this one. So finally, we should get a target function cup. So we, with all the inputs and output. So let us see the various steps of EBNN algorithm and how we obtain the target network. Okay. So in the first step, given the training examples and the domain theory, EBNN will first create a new fully connected feed forward neural network to represent the target function. And this target function is initialized with small random weights. Okay, so how it will assign the weights? Suppose if the clause is true, 0 0.2 will be assigned. If it is false, 0 0.8 is assigned. And then for each training example, xi comma f of xi, EBNN determines the corresponding training derivatives in a two-step process. Okay, so first what it will do, it uses the domain theory to predict the value of the target function. For example, suppose if you take the instance xi, then k of xi is denoting the domain theory prediction. Okay. So, you just uh, remember the terminology xi is the instance. Okay. When you apply the domain theory, the predicted value is k of xi. And then the weights and activations of the domain theory network are analyzed. 
to extract the derivatives of this predicted value a of xi dash with respect to each of the components xi and whenever you are extracting values like this that we call as Jacobian of a of x and it is evaluated at x is equals to xi some specific value we are supplying for example made up of serum so this is given a value of 0 0.2 because it is taken as false and the domain theory prediction is cup is equals to 0 0.8 so this is given by the domain theory and EBNN will calculate the partial derivatives of this prediction with respect to each instance feature early a set of derivatives so let us see how it will do okay what it has to do so we we want the final outcome to be cup okay so what we should do we have to perform a derivative on this so do cup of do do bottom is flat so with respect to each feature we have to perform a derivative okay so the same cup again we are taking the concavity points up let me show you the features first one second let us come back so here bottom is flat this is one feature concavity points up this is one more feature expensive fragile so like that totally we have 12 attributes so all these 12 attributes has to be partially derivated okay so the cup has to be partially derivated with respect to all of this and the final outcome has to be taken so that is what is expressed here and all these partial derivatives will be evaluated at x is equals to xi so this we are calling as the jacobian okay the the function has multiple output units and the gradient is computed the partial derivative is nothing but the gradient okay so this matrix we are calling as jacobian and consider the derivative do cup of do expensive okay so if our domain theory encodes the knowledge that the future ex the feature expensive is irrelevant okay so our domain theory is thinking that this is an irrelevant feature let the cup be expensive or not what is our aim we have to classify based on the given features whether it is a cup or not whether it is expensive or not it doesn't matter okay so if our domain theory thinks so so then what should be the value of this the derivative should ultimately become zero okay so like that you have to adjust the target function okay so whenever you perform a derivative so then it should become zero a derivative of zero corresponds to the assertion that a change in this feature expensive is not having any impact on the predicted value of the cup let it be an expensive one let it be let it not be an expensive one. So it doesn't matter if the value is 0 0.2 or 0 0.8. I need not worry about this. So because it is not having any impact. So like that, all the irrelevant features has to be filtered out. Okay. So on the other hand, if you have a large positive or a negative derivative, this corresponds to the assertion that the feature is highly relevant. Don't look at the sign. Let it be a positive one or let it be a negative one. So sometimes negative values are also having an impact. So this we have learned in the back propagation already. Okay, so let it be a positive value or let it be a negative value. We will see only what is the value that it is supplying. Okay, so if we have a higher value of that, we see the feature is very much required. It is very much relevant for the target function to describe the given attribute, the given one as a cup otherwise this attribute is irrelevant so thus the derivative extracted from this domain theory explanation provide us the important information for distinguishing relevant from irrelevant features so okay so which are the relevant features which are the irrelevant features so that is given by this derivative value and when these extracted derivatives are provided as the training derivatives to the tangent prop for learning the target network cup, so which is indicated as cup target, then they provide a useful bias for guiding the generalization. Based on this, we can 
predict whether it is the target is tough or not. So the usual syntactic inductive bias of neural network learning is replaced here. So why here we are taking the derivatives, right? So because of that, when there will be a bias, so whenever I have some non-zero values with very minute values, but here if the feature is irrelevant, here we are clearly distinguishing between relevant feature and irrelevant feature. If I keep my relevant features also and if I try to classify, then there is a possibility of getting a bias. But here we are clearly distinguishing between relevant feature and irrelevant. Irrelevant ones, when you perform a derivative on it, you are making it zero. Relevant ones, you are keeping it based on the higher value of it. Okay, so the higher the value, the important is the feature. So more important ones you can keep, others you can just exclude. So here there is no possibility of getting a bias similar to the back propagation algorithm. So here this is a bias free algorithm in other words. And the last step is EVNN uses a minor variant of the tangent problem. Okay, so here you are calculating the output. After that, we have to calculate the error function again, right? So here this is the error function we are using. So if you re remember in the tangent prop also we have the same error function almost, but the only difference you can find here is you can see mu i and x to the power of j. So this difference you can observe. I'll explain you what are this. f of x i is the i training instance. Okay, so we are not only taking one instance, but multiple instances we are taking. So then f of x i is the i training instance. And f cap of f of x i is the domain theory prediction for this input x i. And the x j. x j is the jth component of the vector x. Okay. Which is the jth input node in the neural network. And here we have the quotient c. Which is a normalizing constant. Whose value is chosen. To assure that for all i, this mu i value is between 0 to 1. So here, so here mu i is equals to 1 minus modulus of a of x i minus f of a of x i divided by c, right? So how to choose this c is, you have to choose this c value such that you are getting a normalized value of mu i in between 0 to 1. So based on the values of, based on the value of this numerator, you have to choose this denominator. The leftmost term, so this f of xi minus f cap of f, f of xi is the sum of the squared errors between the training value f of xi and the predicted target network, f cap of xi. Whereas the rightmost term, this one, do of a of x by, do x to the power of j minus, do f cap of x by, do of x to the power of j whole squared. So this is the squared error between the training derivatives extracted from the domain theory and the actual derivatives of the target type. Okay, so from this also we can conclude that the leftmost term, so this is contributing to the inductive constraint that the hypothesis must, must fit the observed training examples. So this error is based on the training examples. So it is fitting the training examples. So the inductive part is satisfying. Whereas if you see the rightmost part, this is satisfying as the analytical constraint. Okay, what is it? It, it is saying that the training derivatives should also fit the domain theory. So that's what this derivative part is saying. So both inductive as well as analytical part, both are satisfied in this algorithm. So the relative importance of the inductive and analytical learning component in EVNN is determined by the constant mu i. If you see this error term, in between these two terms, we have this mu i, right? So here this is playing a role. So earlier also, in the previous slide, if you observe, one second, let me show you that. 
to distinguish between the relevant ones and the irrelevant features. Distinguish between the relevant and irrelevant, the derivative is playing a role. So in the same way, here mu i is playing a role to distinguish between the inductive and analytical learning components. So the value of mu i is determined by the discrepancy between the domain theory prediction and the signing value f of x i. So which is giving us a better value. So which is helping us to determine the target correctly. So based on that, the weightage should be given for mu i. The value of mu i should be chosen. Suppose if the analytical component of learning is weighted more. Okay. So always we are seeing that the analytical component of learning is more weighted than when it is more weighted if it is a correctly predicted. If the example is a correctly predicted one by the domain theory and it is suppressed in cases where the example is not correctly classified. Okay. If it is not correctly classified, how it is suppressed, you will have a large value of error. So when you have large value of error, ultimately you will not consider. So it will become a negative value. So automatically it will be suppressed. And this weighing heuristic assumes that the training derivatives extracted from the domain theory are more likely to be correct in cases where the training value is correctly predicted by the domain theory. This is very much important. So whenever the example is correctly classified, so in that case, only all the assumptions, whatever we have taken for the weights will work correctly. So if, if this has to happen correctly, the distinction between relevant to irrelevant features must be done properly. So then this algorithm will give us a better predicted value. Hope you followed the concept. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. If you like the content, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.